Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about the new and upcoming luxury makeup releases, including quite a few holiday sneak peeks, and I will be sharing my thoughts and telling you whether or not I am planning to purchase. This is the segment that I like to call Love It or Leave It. As always, this is a group project, so make sure you sound off down below and let me know your thoughts on these collections as well. We're starting strong with the luxury lipstick battle royale between Chanel and Dior. Yesterday, I shared on Instagram the launch of 31 Le Rouge. This is described as the most exclusive lipstick from Chanel, inspired by the iconic address 31 Rue Cambone, the birthplace of Chanel creation. It's a brand new lipstick formula. There are 12 shades available, and what sets it apart visually is the clear packaging which I already know some people love it, some people hate it, and it's said to be glass. I have not felt this component yet, so I'm hoping it's going to be a really heavy, sturdy, paperweight type of glass, but it's inspired by the faceted square case recalling the mirrors that lined the legendary Art Deco staircase in 31 Rue Cambon. So if you are familiar with Chanel lore and history, you have seen the staircase reference time and time again. It truly is iconic for the brand. The formula is described as firming smoothing and moisturizing. I know they contain gardenia oil, so it's supposed to be lip care plus lipstick. And based on the photo, it looks like the lightest shade at least might have a bit of a sheen to it. So I cannot wait to swatch these in store. Today is the day I'm going to purchase my little coffret set. These are already available on Chanel.com. The individual lipstick with the case retails for $1.95. So it is truly pricey. And then the refills, because it is refillable packaging, the refills are still $80. What I haven't seen online yet is the coffret set. And this is what really excites me and this is what I'm planning to purchase. So there is a little box set. It comes with one of the lipsticks and two refills, and then there are three different leather cases, silver, black, and white. I was so torn. I love all three cases, and I think it is such a special piece of Chanel Beauty. The set retails for $405. It is very expensive. Now, the reason I love this so much, and I already know people are gonna think I have lost my marbles and I'm absolutely insane thinking that this is an exciting launch. The reason I love this is because this is more of a collector's item. I don't think this lipstick is intended to replace your everyday lipstick. In fact, I wouldn't even categorize 31 La Rouge with the other Chanel lipsticks. This is a collector's piece. It's a giftable item, I think, if you're looking for a beautiful luxury gift, this is amazing. Or even a lipstick to mark a special occasion, like brides. If I was getting married this year and I was looking for a special lipstick, maybe something to engrave, I think this little coffret set, maybe with three different shades that I could wear for my wedding, you know, maybe the honeymoon, the wedding, bridal party, that would be something really special. It's more a novelty item that will appeal to the Chanel diehards. It's not really meant for the casual Chanel beauty consumer. In this moment filming this video, I have not seen these lipsticks in person yet, but the idea behind the design, the inspiration behind them does excite me. And this feels like something that, yes, of course I wanna add this to my collection. I'm somebody who lives for these novelty launches. The Factory 5 collection, the Codes Color collection, these little keepsakes, you know, something from the brand that you can truly hold on to forever gift to a friend or maybe pass down to a loved one, a child later on. It's not simply going to expire like the rest of my makeup. Now, if a $200 lipstick sounds insane, just wait because Dior is giving Chanel a run for their money. They have a new Rouge Premier lipstick that is in a ceramic case. It takes 15 steps and three weeks to create just one single lipstick. Peter Phillips, who is Dior Beauty's creative and image director, worked closely with a French porcelain house known for creating Marie Antoinette's Versailles China. I have been scouring the internet for more information on this lipstick and it is very hard to find. There are a couple articles in magazines. It's available right now in the Parisian boutique. I believe that might be the only place. I think Harrods has an exclusive, but from what I've read, it is going to be available in the US September 1st. He says he wanted to create an object so precious that it could be handed down from parent to child like a couture dress, like a precious jewel. So again, this is not just a lipstick. From the outside looking in, an outsider's perspective, how could a lipstick be so expensive? It is also refillable. It comes in a little box. At least some of the photos I've seen, there's a lipstick Rouge Premier box set that you can get. 
and it features the Trois de Jouet print, which is a nod to the motif that dressed the accessories counter in Christian Dior's original boutique in 1947. Like Chanel, it's available in 12 different shades, and it is infused with hibiscus extract and 24 karat gold. It smells faintly of tea and bergamot, and even the shape of the bullet resembles a pearl drop earring, and it's new. And it's said that only a few thousand Dior Rouge Premier ceramic cases were ever made. As soon as I get more information, I will let you know. I know there are a handful of you who are collectors as well, and you might actually be interested in sourcing one of these for yourself. According to this article, which may or may not be correct, this is Business of Fashion, the lipsticks retail a little over $500, and I think that's just for one lipstick. And then I imagine this is going to be extremely limited, so will you always be able to use the refills? This is obviously another novelty meant for collectors, not wide audiences, but I do think it's really exciting and fascinating to see large luxury brands like Dior and Chanel lean into craftsmanship, creating smaller quantities of bespoke items. Next, we have to talk about these concealer launches because there have been quite a few. It seems like we started the year with every brand launching blush and we're ending the year and everybody's coming out with concealer. I'm not sure how much we really needed this just because I felt like last year we had a lot of concealer launches as well. Starting with Gucci, this is the new Concentre de Beauté Concealer. It's available in 40 shades. It's going to retail for $36.50. So pretty reasonable price point. The packaging looks really pretty. It's supposed to have a lightweight texture. It's second skin fuel. It's infused with hydrating ingredients and it dries without creasing and ensures pores stay soft all day long. So many claims. The shade range looks really amazing. 40 shades is a great launch for a concealer. I just added a concealer to the empties bin. It was the Pat McGrath Lab Sublime Skin Fetish. I love that concealer. I think it's the third tube I've gone through, which is pretty good. I have so many already. I'm thinking about implementing a one in, two out rule. So I wanna go through at least one more concealer before I purchase anything else. So I'm going to wait, I'm going to hold off for now, but I do like the sound of this Gucci Beauty Concealer. Now I love the YSL All Hours Foundation, so I'm even more interested in trying the YSL All Hours Concealer. I've had good luck with YSL complexion products. I think they're really good. I believe YSL is under the L'Oreal umbrella. It makes sense because their products are so consistently good. Not as impressive shade range based on this photo. Maybe there are more shades available than what's pictured. They're gonna be $38 each, up to 24 hour wear, which nobody really needs. It's creamy, creaseless, full coverage, and designed for with a multi-use applicator, natural soft matte finish. So this could be tricky. It could kind of go either way. The All Hours Foundation is also a long wear matte formula, but I feel like it does have more of a natural matte finish where it's not drying. I don't feel like it ages me. It wears really beautifully and it's great for photos, for events. I imagine the concealer is the same. It's more of a full glam, full makeup, not a second skin like finish. Longcomb is coming out with the Tint Edol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Concealer to go with the foundation. I love this foundation and I love the idea of a skincare concealer, especially from Longcomb because they do complexion products and they do skincare really well. So this excites me. I do work with the brand, so I want to say they are going to be sending me this. Hopefully the shade is a good match because this excites me anytime there's skincare mixed in with the concealer. It's kind of a prerequisite these days. I love a hybrid product or a serum infused formula, something that's going to give you the benefits of both skincare and full coverage. Now Mario almost had me here because the Surreal Skin Foundation was one of my dark horse favorites last year. I waited such a long time to try it and then when I finally did, it was like, what was I waiting for? It's such a beautiful foundation. It works really well for me. I know some people like it, some people didn't really like it. Description says natural skin-like finish, 22 shades, $29 each. It's supposed to be buildable, crease-proof, long-lasting, and self-setting which I think is a little bit of a turnoff for me. I don't know why. When I hear a concealer is self-setting and you don't need powder, that to me almost sounds like a red flag because I imagine it's going to dry down and I don't want anything that's going to dry on its own. 
There's a really informative TikToker, I believe he's a cosmetic chemist, he creates the products and he did a very initial review of this formula and that is what made me press pause and not purchase right away. So this right now is on my list of items to look out for. When I finish another concealer and I have my two out, this may be one that I purchase, but I wanna wait for a discount. This is something that will go on sale because of the Sephora savings event. I feel no need to rush out and purchase full price. Now let's talk about holiday 2023. I know it is still the end of August, but the sneak peeks are rolling in. And this is a teaser if I've ever seen one. This is the holiday tease of the Hourglass collection. Four cover images, the artwork of four different palettes. However, that's about all we have. Just a sneak peek of the artwork and they look really beautiful. We have an owl, a snake, a jellyfish, and the leopard. So pretty. I think the print is absolutely gorgeous, but we haven't seen the inside of the palettes. That is the kicker. And with Hourglass, you just never know. It could be totally new shades, there could be something really exciting hiding in there, or there could be just the same old powders that we see every single year. I will make up my mind definitively when I see the powders inside. If we have some really interesting blush, bronzer, or highlighter combinations, then I might spring for one. Otherwise, I'm tempted to skip this year. The Clay de Peau Holiday Collection looks stunning. Clay de Peau always knocks it out of the park. Their packaging, their limited edition holiday packaging is always insane, beautiful. Some of the prettiest makeup I've ever seen. It's another one of those really elusive launches. I feel like I never really know when it pops up in a boutique. I don't have an essay to say, the collection is here, come get it or let me sell it to you. I love the aquatic under the sea motif. This feels very tropical, feels very Miami. I do like the look of this eyeshadow palette as well as the limited edition powder looks really pretty. Now the YSL holiday collection looks really pretty. It's kind of this white marble effect on all of the pieces. So we have lip balm, a couple lipsticks, cushion foundation, a Libra fragrance. Couture Mini Clutch Eyeshadow Palette. These colors look really pretty. They have a little snowflake embossed on the powder, which is a nice touch. And then we have a sneak peek look at the advent calendar. There's a lot of makeup, a lot of fragrance in this calendar. I feel like the YSL calendar is pretty good, isn't it? The only issue I find with this is that most everything is given out as a sample. Looks like they might have one of the Vestier fragrances. If they had more of their exclusive fragrances, I think then it would be really great. I love the marble, I love the snowflake. I think it's a very pretty collection. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick up any of these pieces. I may keep my eye on the advent calendar just in case. The cushion compact I actually think is probably the most interesting thing out of everything. This may be an unpopular opinion and it's the first time I've felt this way in years. But I'm looking at the Guerlain holiday collection and overall, I am not a huge fan of the color story. And that's really all it is, is the, co the color story. I don't think is really right for me. I don't think these are colors that I would get a lot of use out of. So this is gonna be an easy skip for me, including the meteorites, which is crazy. I've been collecting them for the past few years. The purple, green, and gold eyeshadow palette will be beautiful on somebody who loves jewel tones. I feel like hazel eyes or maybe brown eyes would look great in these colors. I'm not sure it would be the best color story on blue eyes. I do like the exterior packaging, it's really, really nice, but the colors inside don't really move me. The animal print bronzer is sort of fun. If you're in the market for bronzer, I would say that would be one to look for. Guerlain has great bronzers. The Rouge G lipstick cases, I think the silver and black is kind of pretty. I've been collecting those for the past few years as well. I'm just not really drawn to the deep green. We also have the holiday collection from Givenchy, which looks very pretty. The eyeshadow palette I think is really nice. If you don't already have a lot of plummy, pink, burgundy tones, this would be really beautiful to add to your collection. I was trying to think, I don't know if I've ever tried the Givenchy eyeshadow formula. I'm not sure if I've heard that much about it one way or another. So if you like these eyeshadows, will you let me know? Are they worth visiting or is it something that is okay 
good, not great. We have a couple lipsticks. There's a pastel powder, which looks really pretty. I know the Givenchy Loose Powder is one of those viral products. I have a couple tubs of it and I do think it's really nice. I'm not sure there's anything that really stands out about this particular powder. The liquid highlighter, this is interesting to me. I love a liquid highlight, but I love how it, this comes in a tube. This is very interesting to me. So I'm gonna add this to my watch out list. If this is available at Sephora during the holiday savings event, then I will pick it up. Otherwise, I'm gonna wait. And the truth about holiday makeup, as tempting as it is to purchase right away, because you know these are limited seasonal collections, you feel that pressure as if, if I don't purchase right now, it's gonna disappear. But a lot of this makeup does go on sale later on. And a lot of it might be available at Sephora or other retailers when they're marking things down. Just something to keep in mind. Don't feel like you have to pay full price and purchase immediately. I'm gonna leave you with a couple fragrances that I am so excited to smell. We have a new launch coming soon from Creed. It's called Carmina and it looks like there's pre-order already available on the Neiman Marcus website and that's where I found these notes. It says it's a floral woody amber fragrance. Key notes include pink pepper, black cherry, saffron, rose de may, violet, peony, cashmere wood, amber, and musk. These notes sound delicious. I love the idea of a black cherry fragrance from Creed. I know last year we saw quite a few black cherry fragrances. The bottle has that deep, moody, black cherry, kind of magenta pink look to it. So I think this is going to be a really beautiful fall, winter, sexy date night fragrance. I cannot wait for this. I will definitely be reviewing. And then we have a new launch coming from Parfum de Marly, Alfair. It looks like it's in the masculine bottle, but it's a vanilla forward fragrance. Keynotes include orange blossom, bergamot, cinnamon, bourbon, vanilla, elemi. Guayac wood, ambrox, praline, and musk. The notes sound really edible and delicious. And I'm hoping this is gonna be more of a unisex fall winter fragrance. It says wear all day long from morning to evening, especially during the colder months. It's an unexpected modern ode to a universal ingredient, bourbon vanilla, which is a pure vanilla. A direct descendant of the vanilla introduced in France under the reign of Louis the 15th? <laughs> I don't speak Roman numerals. I think maybe that's the 17th, 15th? I think it's the 15th. I love vanilla, I love Parfum de Marly, so this is really exciting. And it could be similar to Ojan, which is still in the masculine bottle, but is very unisex. I'm thinking this might be a fragrance like that, just based on the notes, where it's a little bit more holiday, smells like cinnamon, baked apple pie, fresh baked goods. I love a gourmand. This sounds very fall winter forward. I cannot wait for these new launches. The final fragrance I have here to talk about might be a dud. I'm not sure. I'm excited because of the bottle alone, but as soon as I read the notes, I thought, womp womp. It's this Born in Roma pink PP Eau de Parfum from Valentino. It says new, but the notes sound like maybe it isn't new. I'm not sure. I love the shade of pink from Valentino. It's perfect for the season of Barbie. We've seen Valentino doing this bright pink for a while now. And I love the look of this matte pink bottle. Looks so pretty. The notes are Mandarin, Orange Blossom Accord, Bourbon Vanilla. That could be the most generic juice that we've ever smelled, or it could be something really amazing. I feel like they're not giving us enough to really tempt us in the notes. The bottle alone is kind of drawing me in. So I'm kind of curious. It says it's available in Europe. I hope to see this in the United States. Those are all of the sneak peeks I have to share. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts and seeing these upcoming releases. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I am so curious to hear your thoughts on the holidays. 
Are you shopping? Are you going really big for the holidays? Are you scaling back this year? Is there any one collection that really stands out to you? Let me know down below in the comment section. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face, all of the launch dates, details, any little morsel of information that I can squeeze for any of these collections, I will include down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.